we'll start the afternoon session back back with um, item number 20 want to report out on the closed session oh yes right. thank you uh, report out of, uh, there's no reportable action on number 29 and on item number 28 we'll be resuming back into closed session after the full agenda perfect thank you okay we'll go back to regular regular agenda uh, 24 Right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, we have uh, our reoccurring monthly meeting uh, concerning roads and homelessness. So we have uh, Jim Riding Sword, our Health and Human Services Director. He's going to go ahead and give a report out regarding uh, the status of, of that for homeless shelter. <clears throat> All right, good afternoon. I'm using some notes here. Um, so we're doing a, a homeless services update uh, for you uh, this afternoon. Uh, first of all, let me talk about uh, 1161, uh, the building that we purchased. Um, you know, again, we uh, we used uh, community development block grants to purchase the building. Those are secured. Um, we have some uh, emergency shelter grant money that we can use for operations. Um, we're uh, we're anticipating whole person care which is a a grant program uh that uh we've been told that we uh, are going to get we just don't have the formal letter on it yet um uh prop 47 we worked with probation uh, to put in a prop 47 uh, grant application uh, that will uh, assist in that uh, activity we have received a uh, uh, California Medical Services Program grant. It's uh, $75,000 a year for three years, I think. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> and we'll use part of that to help support the activity there. And um, and then um, the California Health Foundation approached our collaborative, which is us in Mariposa and Plumas, and has uh, given us $30,000 um, to, to help move the collaborative along. Uh, they're paying for a consultant that will work with us for six months. Um, and so that uh, is in the process of, uh, the money is there. We've uh, interviewed for consultants. They're just putting together the final contract. They'll carry the contract. It's not something that'll come back to the board. <clears throat> but that's a pretty big thing for small counties. Uh, for the foundation uh, to show an interest in what we're doing, which could, uh, you know, end up being some money, you know, further money down the road to help develop systems and things like that. Um, we've been invited to the uh, Cal Kappa conference next week. That's the community action boards uh, to present on what we're doing here in San Benito County. We're one of two counties that have been invited. The other is San Luis Obispo. Uh, these two presentations, as I understand it, will then become part of a national case study that will say to other uh, counties, this is how you can do business, you know, if you want. Um, the collaboratives is moving along. Um, and then um, we'll be coming back to your board on May the 9th. <clears throat> And that is the date that uh, we'll be standing up here with Adam, saying here's the plans, here's uh, what we need to do to go out to get the people to build it so that the uh, at least the shelter part of 1161 will be completed by November. And we plan uh, to open that up for this winter. And, and uh, then on May the 23rd, we'll be coming back to the board, hopefully, to ask you to approve the whole person care uh, uh, grant and uh, to take some actions that will allow us uh, to begin to bring in some staff to get things started uh, for the whole project. So that's our update today. I'd be happy to take any questions or comments. Any questions for the board? None? None? Okay, thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. So we also have a roads item today, uh, as we mentioned, uh, to give you guys an update with re-roads. So we have, uh, I believe Larry here is going to go ahead and start um, the process. We have Kevin as well to give an update to the board concerning um, 
the federal level of, of reimbursement and, and other things. And then um, I believe Louie is also here avail available as well if, if we need to add anything further. But for now, we have Larry. Right? Okay, before, before we go with the presentation, Ray, I got a quick question. Um, you or anyone in staff can help me out here. My understanding through SB1, we're, we're going to get about $2.2 million, somewhere around there. Is that based on the, the dollars that we currently get right now? Looking at the paperwork, looking at it right now, I believe we're getting about 1.5, approximately 1.5 million. Um, it looks like there will be an increase if uh, through through SB1. You'll notice there's a, within that uh, legislation act there's multiple uh, taxations on diesel vehicles and other other ones uh, to kind of get more up to date because um, there's been a, a really a, a lull. There haven't been any increase in taxes, you know, electric vehicles, right. those types of things. So the calculation that they have come up with is about three point um, I don't know, something million, which is about 2.2 2 more. 2.2 2 um, more. 2 okay, 2 inclusive more. of the 1.5. That's correct. So, again, I need to find out the okay. allocation allocation with that to make sure that there, there's no other jurisdictions okay, with the it. city or other, right. other so, things. But that's for our county as a whole. That's, that's the So the, the, the 1.5 that we get, that goes directly for roads, right? It goes directly to the, you know, the division, kind of where it's going right now. Okay. But that's the Perfect. reason why we're behind because it's been – Perfect. It's been declining, and that's why the road crews, there's less road crews. We are not able to put money to fix roads, those types of things. So now with this increase in tax, we hope, you know, hopefully that will that'll remedy that. So, so. Then, it, then it leads to his presentation. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair and members of the board, thanks. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of give a rundown of some of the activities that are going on in RMA with respect to roads and, and bridges. Um, and... Uh, you know, what I would say is that uh, our intention would be to come back either, you know, in May or, you know, at some point in the near future, and then on a sort of a scheduled, maybe like, you know, monthly or quarterly basis with a, you know, with a complete report on uh, activities within the RMA, um, all activities within the RMA, so you can sort of see the progress that we're making as we're, as we're going forward here. But with respect to roads, um, what I can report to you today is that uh, the remedial repairs on Lover's Lane, where the flooding occurred, have been complete. Uh, th that was done last week. The work was finished. So um, the road is now uh, serviceable and passable. Um, but, there, but, but the repairs that have been done are in no way permanent. So there will need to be some you know, future uh, work done out there to really uh, you know, make, um, make the road um, or, or remove the road f uh, from the uh, subject to the flooding that, uh, the, and, and drainage issues that, that can occur out there. So uh, that's something that's being looked uh, into at, at this time, and we'll come back uh, you know, in the future with a, uh, with a report on you know, what we believe would need to be done to Lover's Lane for, for permanent repairs. Um, Sort of related to that are these. Uh, is the I want to mention the the private levy that uh, that was breached during the storms and the, and the repairs on that. So uh, there is some good news in that regard, in that the uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture has a program through the um, Na Nat Natural Resources Conservation Service, and they uh, there's a there's a funding source there that. Uh, will provide 75% reimbursement to the sponsoring agency for the repair of that levy. It looks like the county will be the sponsoring agency for that. Uh, we'll have to have some agreements with the property owners, you know, for entry onto the property to do the repairs. Um, there also may need to be some additional environmental uh, work uh, and permits that need to be obtained, but. Um, uh, USDA is finalizing uh, the plans and the specifications. They're doing essentially the design work for that, and they're going to hand it over to the county, uh, along with an agreement uh, for uh, for the uh, the reimbursement. Um, so that will be something that will be coming back to the board, uh, I believe, in the near future. Um, I mean, I know. Hold on, hold on, uh, Mark Supervisor Medina. Any idea when? Um, I believe probably uh, we should be getting plan specs and a draft agreement within the next maybe 30 days. 
I was at the, um, so the USDA has a satellite office just down the block from the RMA office on Technology Drive, and I stopped in there yesterday and spoke with staff. Um, and, you know, based on what I heard, uh, I would expect maybe that we would receive something within about a month from them. So when, when would we start the actual uh, project? Well, if we got the plans and specs in a month and we got the agreement and we were able to bring that to the board sometime maybe in the, uh, over the summer, we should be able to start work, I, you know, mid to late summer, I would hope. How can we expedite this? How can we expedite this? Um, because I don't want this to go, you know, it's going to be good weather. Yeah. We're not going to see a problem anymore. Yeah. And then it might slip someone's mind, and then next winter, when it rains again, we're going to be in the same yeah. place. So I want to see if we can keep ahead of this yeah. and somehow try to expedite this because we've been telling all the residents out there that this is going to be fixed, uh, you know, weeks ago. Yeah. Well, the USDA, I know, has uh, this. This is a priority. You know, this, this seems to be a priority project for them. So I know they're they're, they're working expeditiously. I, I don't know what we can do to really expedite their work. Uh, the, the the one real unknown uh, at this point seems to be, and we're trying to get a handle on this as as we speak, is on the um, you know what type of environmental. Uh, permitting might be necessary, uh, whether we need to get some uh, a permit or a clearance from the Army Corps of Engineers or Fish and Game or U.S. Fish and Wildlife. This is this is something that is is kind of unknown at this time. Are but we still under the emergency? Um, well, we are, and we and that's something that I'm trying to you know see if you know we can use the emergency declaration to maybe clear some of those hurdles, those CEQA and NEPA hurdles. But um, it's it's not, it's 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 not entirely clear at okay. this point. But we're, we, are, we are working on that. I'll, I'll talk to you personally later on. Just okay. Thank you. Yeah, feel free to contact me. Um, John Smith Road realignment, I know this has been a priority for quite some time. Um, and what I can tell you is that uh, based on conversations that I've had with, with the staff in, in RMA, it is our intention to uh, get this work underway sometime later this year, calendar year, not fiscal year, but calendar year. Uh, the the final design work needs to be completed, and um, and we're working to get that done. And then there are some environmental issues that we think we finally have overcome, uh, and it has to do with um, providing um, suitable um, uh, mitigation for um, endangered species. And so we we've worked out an agreement with a conservancy that's not too far from here that has a mitigation bank where we can purchase essentially credits or land within that mitigation bank uh, to mitigate for the impacts to the um, I believe it's a salamander, um, a tiger salamander or something. I'm I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, um, the 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 encouraging news is that uh, uh, the staff that's working on this is. Uh, is 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 uh, is intent on uh, getting this work uh, out to bid and underway by uh, sometime later this year. So again, we'll I'll have more information in a in a future report. Yeah, I, I think um, seeing what maybe the water district did with uh, the urban water supply plant that's up on uh, on Union Hill uh, off of Union Road. Uh, they had to do the, uh, the same thing to move that project along and purchase mitigation. It's ridiculous, but we have to do it. Yeah, there's actually a couple of projects that we have to do this on. So we were uh, we were able to uh, get in contact uh, or make contact with this mitigation bank that has um, it's a it's a it's a cal it's a fish and game certified mitigation bank for salamander and also the the frog. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what 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 yeah. species the frog is, but uh, there's a frog and a salamander that are the endangered species that we seem to run up against with the bridge projects and and this road project. And we can um, we can purchase uh, we can mitigate for. Uh, uh, the environmental impacts by by purchasing the the credits through that uh, through that mit that mitigation bank and that I think that agreement will be coming to you in the in the near future, as well. Um, the bridge projects, you, if you recall, at the last meeting you you adopted a, you know several resolutions that uh, made some findings that allow us to sort of you know basically break the logjam on five bridge projects. Three of them are bridge replacements. Two of them were uh, bridge guardrail. Uh, replacements and so those projects are now moving forward. Again, more uh, have more uh, detailed progress report uh, uh, perhaps at uh, 
at the next meeting where we where we provide a, a report. Um, other things I can just mention to you is that, uh, and this kind of goes in line with the discussion you just had about the state, the additional state funding through SB1. Uh, you know, the county uh, did commission a pavement management uh, system report uh, sometime in the past year, year and a half, and I've I've seen that report. Uh, what uh, what now needs to happen is that report needs to sort of be translated into an actual pavement management program, like a work plan or a program, and uh, hopefully the additional funding. From the state will be able to uh, uh, will be able to be uh, earmarked for um, you know road improvements, and we'll be able to tackle uh, you know road improvements in a, in a very you know sort of strategic and, and, and systematic approach by using the uh, the results of the of the work that was done in that pavement management uh, program study. So I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be spending some some time uh, you know looking at that study, understanding it better, and then. Um, and then coming back with you know sort of a uh, you know options for recommended work plans on you know what you know how how you could allocate you know resources for for road improvements and what the uh, what the overall impact would be on the county's road network. So that's I, I, yeah. I got a, a question about that because that that's going to really fall in, um, almost into a political arena because I'm definitely going to want all my roads being fixed with that $2.3 million that we're going to get every year. So I, I think somehow you need to come up with a fair, you know, if there's such thing as a fair, yeah. fair way where, you know, the reality is we need to address roads where it's heavily impacted, where there's a lot of cars that Yeah, no, I, I certainly understand that. And, and, you know, and almost to the point, just forget about those roads is only you have one or two people drive through <clears> those roads. Yeah. No, we'll have, we'll have different options, uh, you know. <clears throat> Supervisor Mattel? Yeah, you know, I don't, and I, I you know, I, I understand what the chairman's saying, uh, but, you know, I, we also have some, you know, roads that are highly used that uh, if we don't do something real, real soon, it would be so much more expensive. we got to weigh the political and, and the fairness of it and also the pragmatic approach, too, that, you know, you as the public works uh, director, um would kind of make arguments for certain projects sooner than later. Um, from my own perspective, what I, I don't want to see happen is that we hire a bunch of people and not put asphalt down. I think we need to put the asphalt down and contra uh, consider contracting a lot of this work out. I would expect that's exactly what would happen. I would think that most of this road work that would be done through the pavement management program would, would be work that we would be retaining contractors to do. It wouldn't be done through county forces, yeah. But anyway, we'll come back with a report. You know, with a with a with a with a report and recommendations, and there's there's options, and there's certain strategies that can be used, and there's you know sort of implications if you you know, if 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 a road is in a really bad condition, you know, almost unserviceable, you know, it's going to be very expensive to fix that road, and you know, do you want to do you want to allocate the money there because you're getting a few complaints on that road, or is it better to try to hit roads that are maybe in you know, would seem to be maybe in a in a better state of condition, but if you can do some maintenance treatments or some sort of you know treatments on those roads you can extend the you know the service life of those roads and it becomes less much less costly over over the long term so these are kind of you know the you have to you have to weigh the different options and and, and settle you know ultimately you're going to settle on a plan that uh, you're you know you're all going to have to you know agree to you know before i go to supervisory bring bring back three or four options yeah tables. yeah absolutely yeah i just i don't have a question i just have some comments and that's you know, in this discussion we're having about roads, obviously, and the passage of SB1, um, sure, we'll have a, a little uh, infusion, an additional $2 million, two point something million. It's nothing compared to what we face. And I think that we could sit here and talk about pennies, uh, but we have to talk about how we bring even more resources to our community. And I think that there's two issues that we need to talk about in the future. Um, Obviously, it was addressed this morning becoming a South Help County. South Help County's, uh, the last report I read, nearly, I think, a little over 80% of the population in the state resides in the South Help County. Those are the communities that are going to get a majority of this money. So certainly we've got, to be, we've got to do all we can to become a South Help County. The other part is advocacy. If we're going to capture more money in Sacramento, if we're going to be uh, – 
kept updated about opportunities um, to bring money to our county, we need advocacy in Sacramento and something we do not have. We rely on our state legislatures, but unfortunately, you know, I've been to Sacramento many times. I remember when I worked for two members of the state uh, of uh, the state assembly, and I'd go to Sacramento. People would ask me, "Where are you from?" I'm from San Benito. Oh, San Bernardino? No, San Benito. San, San Bernardino, San Benito. <laughs> People do not know where we are, and we need. I know I've, I met with our staff about it. We invest zero to very little money in advocacy in Sacramento, and it's time that we. Uh, you know, that we do what is necessary and get a lobbyist to represent our interests in Sacramento because we cannot rely on our state legislature. As great as Anna is and Mr. Canella, you know, we need people to reach out to other members of the assembly, other members of the legislature uh, to do, you know, the work for us and for our community because certainly us going up and testifying at hearings is, is great and all, but, you know, it's not going to get the job done. You know, we need advocacy in Sacramento, and I would like to get this item agenda for the future, Mr. Chair, because we need to have a serious discussion about investing money to get proper representation in Sacramento. That's how we're going to capture monies. That's how we're going to capture uh, some, some victories for our, our, our county at our state capitol. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, actually, I was actually maybe uh, put it during the budget process, or unless does the board want to hear it earlier or do you want to hear it through the budget process Anthony I, I, I think uh, I, I think it's a, a budgetary item I uh, we should probably hear it from the the budget process okay. and I you know some very valid points that supervisor Rivas made and I, I better not say anything more about it but I think the budget process with economic development money that we're shifting somewhere else that maybe we shouldn't be funding, maybe should be funding a lobbyist instead. Okay, well then we'll, we'll go through the budget yeah. process. Is that okay, Supervisor? Okay. Um. So in, our, in, uh, in May, we have a special board meeting for budget, the budget process, so we'll add it on that, that agenda. Well, is, that's just for budget process, right? Not the actual discussion of what's in the budget. Well, my understanding is, is the topic is, is to put infused funding for next year's budget for an advocacy in Sacramento. So this would be the time to talk about it for our next year's budget. Okay. So I would recommend okay. putting it on that on All that. Right, then meeting. go ahead put it on that. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Good. Okay, so the uh, Yeah, so just the final thing I okay, just want to Hold on, make, sir. Hold oh yeah, I'm sorry. You're Jim, right? No, I'm Larry. Larry, I got sorry about that, Larry. Um Supervisor Rivas, that concludes your that's it. Okay, go ahead, Larry. Yeah. So the final thing I just want to mention is uh, is some work that's work that's going on to really sort of catalog and inventory, uh, you know, the road infrastructure that we have in the county. And there is work that is ongoing. We, we you know, we started with the bridges. We have all the bridges, uh, you know, inventoried. Uh, we're now currently um, inventorying, you know, drainage features. So these would be, you know, box culverts and, and pipe culverts and other drainage facilities in the county. And there's actually some that's going around and, you know, locating these so they can be um, uh, input into the, into the county's uh, GIS system. So um, it just creates another uh, a layer of, uh, of data that becomes very valuable, you know, when it, when it comes time to, you know, start doing design work and, and, and figuring out, um, you know, what, what, what needs to be done, what types of, uh, you know, where, where there's deficiencies and, 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 and projects that, uh, you know, maybe need, to be, uh, maybe need to be completed. So this is an ongoing effort. And, uh, again, as, you know, in a future, uh, future session, I, you know, maybe we can uh, report and, um, on, on the work that's being done in this regard and show you some just some examples of, of how that uh, how that interfaces with the county's GIS system and what we can what we can ultimately do with that thank you Larry. and that's uh, that's really all I uh, have to report I don't know if Kevin has anything that he wants to uh, chime in on but is that on uh, you gonna report on roads or some yeah, roads okay. thank you Larry um, good afternoon mr. chair members of the board um, so as of yesterday, uh, well, I guess I'll say as of Friday, Larry or Jake Hubble uh, is no longer uh, part of the county workforce. And as of yesterday, I've taken over some of the leadership roles to help um, bridge that gap, you know, on an interim basis. Uh, so I don't have too much of an update because it's literally been about a day and a half now. But um, but 
my my approach to all of this is is there's a couple different prongs to it. One is boosting morale, figuring out what we need in that department in terms of training, equipment, um, uh, testing, whatever we need to, to help improve our workforce and to get them to try to work harder for us and earn the, the, the dollar better. Um, but also then prioritizing projects. Um, a lot recently I've noticed, you know, we do a lot of um, you know, we get a call from someone, we get an email, and we jump on it, and we take, take care of it right away, which is, which is great. But as we get further away from the storms, we need to start doing, you know, the things we need to do every year, the grading, the, the weed abatement, um, just the normal potholes that pop up. Uh, so one thing I want to really work on is coming up with the weekly and monthly schedules. That way, when I do get a call from one of you guys saying, you know, this road at this, this intersection needs to be addressed, that I can give you a pretty accurate timeline of when it's going to be addressed so that you can then go and pass that on to your constituent. And of course, we'll, we'll, we'll try to make it as quick as possible, but, um, you know, we also just need to be, be reasonable, especially when, you know, we know we have a road that takes two hours to get to that needs to be graded. And those are, those are where it's pretty tough when it's, you know, two, three hours of work, but the rest of the day is all driving just to get there. Um, so just kind of having that more strategic, more global approach to it. Um, and I think we will get a little bit bang, better bang for our buck. In terms of reimbursement for some of the roads that we have uh, already been working on, uh, Lover's Lane, as uh, Larry said, is the temporary fix is complete. We've been working with a consultant to help with um, maximizing our ability to get full reimbursement for projects like that, and like the one on San Juan Canyon that's also complete. Um, that consultant, you should be seeing a contract at the next board meeting to approve, um, but they've been generous enough to work with us before that. Uh, it's up with county council currently. Um, but that's pretty much where we're at right now. I hope uh, at the next, uh, next month or whenever the next um, update is, I'll have a little more, a little more uh, substance to present to you. Patel? Yeah, I, I don't envy your job uh, at all, Kevin. It, it's really tough. There's not that many um, folks that are on the road crew. Um, and I, I know that's one of the most important issues out there in the county. I, there's not a day that goes by that I don't get somebody calling me and sometimes three or four calls. And uh, usually they're not happy calls. So once in a while I get a happy call, but not very often. Uh, but what I, my observations with the, the current road crew that we have is I, I think you do have to address morale and address accountability. Um, and I, I touched bases with you on a couple of issues that, that we have. And, and we just have, as we, you know, hire people or if they're going out to do a job, I, I, uh, we have to emphasize that we got to set a higher standard, a higher bar. You know, the example I had with Bixby <coughs> Lane uh, is very valid. The road was closed. <laughs> The barricades were up for why the road was closed, and that's fine. Well, it was fixed a month ago, and the barricades came down to the side of the road and, and never got picked up, and there's still a couple of signs out there um, that show that the road is still closed. And the, this is safety issues, and, and people from our department drive by there every day and, and don't want to take the time to stop and pick up the sign. Um, and, and the people that we need to employ have to care about their jobs. They have to care about it deeply. And if they don't care about their jobs and don't care deeply, um, maybe they, they're not right to be employed by San Benito County. And um, it makes everybody's job tougher. Uh, and we gotta have common sense. We gotta uh, somehow, as we go forward, hopefully you're not in this position very long. Uh, we, we hope to find a p person that's uh, do the roads and get out in the pickup that we, that we keep buying and drive around and see how these folks are doing out in the field and that they're getting the work done. And like you said, the, uh, the forms are filled out. I was here doing this. This job's complete. Let's move on to the next one. Right. We got to have some accountability uh, in the field and oversight with somebody knowledgeable uh, to get the work done. Because a lot 
of the stuff that I see out there, I'm not a road expert, but I know enough is caused by people not doing the maintenance that is preventative. And that's running the grader, cutting the grade where the water is off the road, not in the road, and, and stuff like that. We either have to have a crew that does the work and is productive, or we got to contract it out. And I'm, 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 I'm for either way, um, yeah, as long as we protect that public asset. That's very, very expensive. I completely agree, and I'll be working towards that every day. I, I would cautious my fellow, uh, cautious the fellow supervisors to refrain themselves from hinting on personnel issues. You don't get the calls that I get. <laughs> <laughs> Still, it's we, we don't want another potential litigation before us. Uh, Supervisor Munzer, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I just want to thank all of you for for this report. It's very informative. I appreciate it very much, and I hope it continues because I don't want these projects to fall by the wayside. Um, thank you for, for uh, the report on John Smith Road, and you're going to have to learn all the critters that are in danger that live here in San Mateo County. There are a lot more than people. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, I have a couple, qu couple questions, um, one of which is not in my district, after in, in Supervisor Medina's district. It was brought up, and I don't remember how long ago, the intersection of, of um, Fallon and Fairview, doing some kind of traffic control um, at that intersection, and I believe a study was going to have to be done. So if, if you don't have an answer today, maybe in the next report, that can be addressed where we are on that. It, it was either turning that into a four-way stop or single putting a signal on it because it, that was something that was near and dear to Supervisor uh, Berrios' heart. Um, also, I don't think Hospital Road Bridge was mentioned, but I don't want that forgotten. We, we got to get, get the shovel in the ground at, to some degree this summer also. So, it's not, I mean, we got so many projects that have been hanging fire, 10, 20 years, we need to get some movement on all of them. And I'm glad you guys are tracking them and, and talking about movement on, them, movement on them. I appreciate that. The other, the other issue is, is I like the idea of coming out with a plan for the roads. A lot of blood will be spilled up here as we fight <laughs> over that plan. But your job is to come up with a plan. Our job is to fight over it. <laughs> but we need to have that plan. That way, if money comes available, yeah. we would have the plan in place that we can say, okay, we got a plan to deal with it and give, it, give us the money. I don't know that money will become available, but every once in a while it does. I appreciate your, your effort in developing that plan. Yeah. And I think that is all that I wanted to address. Again, I appreciate all the work you guys have done, all the staff has done on it. And it's great to see these things moving forward finally. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, actually, Supervisor Munson gives me an idea. Um, can you guys provide the board through email uh, a, a snapshot report of what you guys are going to present to the board so then it allows us to do further research and ask the questions to you guys? And it just it will be a revolving report in which we can all work together to have a, a good picture of a, a plan for our community. I think that's absolutely possible. That would be a good idea. Okay. All right. Um, well, just one so answer to Mr. Munger's question is uh, there was a car count study being done out there. So I don't know where that's at or who, who actually initiated that. That might have been before you were here. But you might want to check the records. There was uh, right, out, right after Felon and right before Felon. There was a, on Fairview, there was some equipment out there. Yeah, I know. I don't know specifically about that intersection. You could be right, but I know every week we go and we put out new counters at different locations. Um, so that's ongoing. Um, just need to figure out what the data from that specific intersection is and what but we can do. I think I brought it before the before the board, and, and I think I had the support of Supervisor Medina. 
That is a dangerous intersection. There's been many accidents there. The guardrail protecting the house on the corner has been hit many times. And Supervisor Barrios um, was lobbying for signals there for several years before she left office. So I had a family member get run off the road at the intersection a, a, a while back. So it became near and dear to my heart. And I'd just like to see some progress made in, in seeing what we can do to, to um, put more traffic control there. Yeah, so I just mentioned that, you know, one of the things I've noticed since I've been here, and it's only been three and a half weeks, I think. And it seems like three and a half years, maybe. But, <laughs> but we're, I'm enjoying it, believe me. <laughs> I think we're both. I think we're both enjoying it. We really are. Um, it, it actually, it's, it's. This is. This is. This has been. Um, uh, how should I say? It's been surprisingly delightful to actually be be, be working out here. But um, one of the things that I've noticed that the RMA I think is lacking is just some like in-house traffic engineering expertise, and a lot of agencies, you know, do have this. And so I'm trying to see how we might be able to bring some in-house traffic engineering expertise on board because uh, when you have that, you can quickly do these sorts of intersection analyses. You can determine warrants for stop signs and traffic signals. You can go out and look at issues that are you know reported in the field. There's a hazard here. We need a sign here. We you know something is missing over here and and you can quickly you know get on those and 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 I learned last week when I when I sort of sat down with Jake Hubble before he left you know I asked him I said you know how does how how does you know how does work orders or work requests you know get processed and get to you you know if somebody calls in and says they think there ought to be a you know this ought to be looked at there ought to be a sign in this location I said, how does that get done and you know he sort of just rolled his eyes and didn't really have a good you know, really good answer for me. He just said sometimes, you know, the word just comes down to do something, and that's kind of they just go out and do it. So, I think there's they, they, we need to build build a little more strength in house uh, to be able to uh, you know do those types of analyses and create the kind of uh, a record uh, that we would maintain in a you know and file that we would have so that when you know we put up a sign or or adjust a sign or do some sort of changes with striping or signage or whatever it happens to be there's actually a record of that and that's really important for if nothing else just for you know for for purely for like liability purposes because if there's ever an accident or something I mean, the first thing that you know uh, you know attorneys are going to be looking for is you know where's it where's the record for this work that was done when was it done how was it done who analyzed it what their qualification all that kind of stuff and so um, you know that's that's something that you know has become apparent to me and and I think you know we're going to be working on that hey, thank you just for your records, it was uh, April 3rd when they went out there to put the equipment in, and it was at about 2.37 p.m. They went out on Fairview and Fallon and put some type of uh, traffic flow equipment. Fairview. The counter? You mean the counters? Yes. Oh. April, it was April 3rd. April 3rd at 2.37 yes. p.m. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, I got a more of an info, and I, I kind of said this at the uh, COG supervisor, but telling myself, serve on COG. Um, Buena Vista Road is a, it's one of those roads that's half city, half county. And as of today, there's about to be close to 400 new homes impacted that Buena Vista Road. Uh, we got West Side, got um, Chispa Project, which is low-income housing. And then you have two um, market rate housing developments being built. Pretty soon there's going to be a couple other applications on that road. And so somehow we got to get together the city talk, sit down, talk, and see how we can mitigate um, some traffic and safety issues because that's right in the heart of my district. Okay. And those citizens are not up in arms right now. And I want to prevent that from coming to the board sure. of supervisors in the future. Right. So we, we got to get together with the city of Halster and talk yeah. about some type of road and safety um, yeah. conditions. Okay, well, I'll make note of that. I, I, well, I have to confess I haven't had really hardly any interaction with the city of months, Hollister. But but thank you. Yeah, <laughs> thank but you. we'll do so. Okay. Um, any, other, any other comments, Supervisor? None? That concludes your report? Yeah. Um, Ray? Um, that's it. Uh, we'd like to go ahead and probably maybe open it up to the public if, if you like, but that's, that's it for our report. Okay, thank you. Right, anybody from the public? No one? 
Okay, all right, let's move on. Oh, shoot. Number third, no, no, I'm sorry. Number, oh, 26. 26. 26. The big one. Yep. That's the one we were waiting for all day. <laughs> well, I was All right. Good afternoon. So a little update on the jail project. Um, you recall in February, I believe, you had approved a contract with Vanner Construction Management to help us with some bid phase activities to help us get a handle on costs and um, just try to make sure we're doing everything we can to uh, have a successful project. Um, since that time, we have been looking at all the different cost items, seeing if there's cheaper options or at least some firmer numbers rather than some of the estimated numbers we had. Um, they completed a constructability review, and then our consultants were working on some of those revisions. Um, we conducted a pre-qualification process for general contractors, we, which involved um, panelists uh, from staff and consultants to uh, review those submittals provide scoring, uh, conduct client interviews with their past, uh, some of their past customers. And then what we have next, we, we, we got that down to a list and there were a few firms that were found not to be qualified. Uh, two of them so far have filed an appeal, so we're gonna do um, a little appeals process for that that, they're, um, that we're required to provide. Uh, pending that outcome on May 9th at your next board meeting, uh, we will have you certify the list of uh, contractors that we have found to be qualified. Those contractors will be the only ones uh, allowed to bid on the project. And the project will be advertised and go out to bid uh, basically the following day, so on May 10th. Um, we should be out to bid, barring any, any other issues. So that's where we're at with the project right now. And I have another item to talk about, but if there's any questions on the status. Okay, thank you. Supervisor Batello. Um, uh, not really much of a question. Uh, maybe Ray needs. Oh, I, you know, I um, if you, I'm not sure where you're at with the presentation, but I definitely would like to have Jerry go up, and he's a representative from from Vanner. I'm not sure if you're going to go up after or a little bit, but I would like to give him an opportunity to talk to the board a little bit as well from their point of view. If that's okay with the board. Mr. In Chair. reference to the, the to the pro to what work they've done, and kind of um, with regards to it. Uh, Okay. Adam just brought up. Well, actually, hold on. Um, anybody has any questions? Uh, uh, Adam? No? Okay, thanks, Adam. Okay. <clears throat> I don't lose that. Oops. Thank you, Chairman and Board Members. <clears throat> I basically re reiterate what uh, Adam said. He, um, he was correct. We've performed the pre-qualification process, helped develop the, the standards, reviewed the criteria, uh, did the scoring and evaluation. There was 13 general contractors that submitted and um, eight that have been pre-qualified, uh, two of them that are about to uh, appeal. And the process is on Thursday for, to go over the appeals process and determine whether um, it, that determination will stand or they will be allowed to be part of the pre-qualified pool. Uh, we also did a constructability review, came up with about 620 comments, uh, which um, HMC was working on. I don't know where they're at now on that. Um, but uh, if everything goes as planned, we now will be going out to bid. The project will be able to go out to bid on May 9th after the uh, Board of Supervisor approval, should those that appeal want to come up to the board and, and make their final um, um, case um, and then certify those uh, that, that and they're in the pool. Uh, bid opening, um, go over through the schedule real quick. We also did a project management plan, uh, reviewed the Division 0 and 1 to provide comments on that. As, as Adam has stated, the FF&E items that are basically the radio, loose furniture, detention equipment, IT network equipment um, is uh, being reviewed to determine if there's any funds that can be shifted from the soft cost into the hard costs. So on bid day, uh, there's... Um, it gives you more surety that there'll be able to be enough funds to uh, make the project go forward. 
Uh, we've also gone over any will serve letters uh, to make sure that the utilities and the design of the utilities are to the point where there is would be no delays of the project once they start construction. Uh, we've reviewed site logistics uh, to ensure that there's uh, plenty of information in the bid documents so the contractor can bid that um, effectively. Um, and basically doing a kind of a weekly status update. We've been running those meetings to ensure that there's, you know, we're catching kind of the things that in our history uh, and in our experience are very critical to a project, um, getting it into uh, construction. Uh, and also going uh, into construction, kind of looking at things. Uh, so if it goes out to bid on May 9th as planned, uh, bid openings would be on June 20th. Board approval would be June 27th. Uh, Public Works Board uh, bond item would be up in Sacramento on July 14th. PMIB, the Pool Money Investment Board, who approves the loan, would be on August 16th. Department of Finance approval would be August 18th. And then start of construction would follow around August 23rd. Now, I, I would note that these are the timelines that uh, we didn't increase anything here. Uh, the, the, what we did during the pre-construction uh, services, the bid and award phase, we ended up being able to squeeze down some of those other activities, uh, the bidding and the approval and all that kind of good stuff, in order not to extend the project any further out. Um, with that, the completion of the project would still stay uh, on track for February of 2019, which is an 18-month duration. And then operation would start three months after that, in line with what the uh, Board of uh, State and Community Corrections has on May of 2019. Um, that's that's basically kind of a summary of where we're at right now on the project. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, if I may ask. So can you please enlighten the board, um, the pre-bid qualification and what, what that does? I mean, you know, what does that buy us or what does that do for us, if you don't mind? So it's kind of twofold. Um, first, it allows you to put the project out. So you're marketing the project and you're go not just to the general contractors, but all the subcontractor community. They're they knowing that this project is coming on. That's uh, one of the biggest ways you can ensure that you get favorable bids at bid time so you can get a, you get a, a good coverage on every trade. Um, and then two is it helps protect the county in certain ways. It doesn't guarantee it, but it, uh, it elevates the level of confidence that you're not going to get a claims-oriented type of contractor, somebody that has a lot of safety issues, uh, someone that uh, has performed poorly on other projects, uh, somebody, a uh, contractor who has quality issues. And this, again, is at the general contractor level. Um, what's important about that is they're the ones that are driving the project. Of course, the subcontractors, which you can have anywhere between 30 to 40 different subcontractors under the general contractor. But it helps them, uh, it helps you determine those that are, are qualified to manage the project, um, execute the work in a proper way, coordinating all their subcontractors uh, on a project. Plus, it, it also uh, ferrets out those that don't have any j type of jail experience um, and those that are are, um, are are just not at the uh, level of uh, expertise or level of, uh, um, of service that you would expect for a project of this magnitude. Okay. Now, do, do they get like a – what's their charge? Is it, is it a percentage, 1%, 2%? What? what do general contractors charge? Yeah. Uh, it, that's not a um, that's, but that's not a factor to determine no okay. so that's that's not what we do to pre-qualify them um, obviously this is a low bid it's a um, um, design bid build type of delivery method okay uh, so it'd be behoove them especially now that you have eight pre-qualified contractors not saying they're all gonna bid but you would um, assure that you have them sharpening their pencils a little more <laughs> I like that okay so but we're still continuing our marketing efforts it doesn't stop when we do the general contracting marketing it it, it really bleeds down into the subcontractor community the vendors the suppliers because they're the ones that are going to have coverage on every bid because the contractor will break up the the package in various uh, packages however they deem fit for them and um, what we're doing now is going out to the subcontractor community and making sure they know that this project is coming down the pipe. Uh, we go to conferences, we go to seminars. Uh, we have one planned in early May, uh, the Blue Book Conference, uh, which is a big uh, contracting. Um, so the general book. contractor is going to bring all the subcontractors to perform the work? Yeah. Okay. County will have a contract with the general contractor. General contract will have a contract with all the subs. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Ray? 
No. Not right. Thank you. You bet. Thank Adam, you. You got other? Yeah. Um, I would I would just like to add that um, those dates are our targets. Those are the you know best case scenario, and we'll, we're doing everything we can to hit those dates. Some of those are up to the state um, in hitting their agendas and things like that. So we're staying on top of it. Um, so that leads us into the next step uh, that um, I was hoping to request a little direction uh, from the board. Um, basically, RMA, myself, um, the team needs some additional assistance uh, through the construction phase of this of this project and other projects, but specifically this one. If you'll recall, when we first did this application for funding for this project, there was the intent to use a construction management firm. When we went out for the phase two, which lowered our match, we shifted some numbers around to try to put more money into construction because we felt the initial request was too low. We couldn't <coughs> raise the request, we could just move money around. At the time, the staffing and workload and other issues that we were facing were such that it seemed like a realistic option to perform those services in-house. Obviously, as you've, as you've seen, um, a lot of things have changed, and that's no longer practical with, with the staff that we currently have. So we have a few options that uh, we've discussed and considered. And the first option would be to hire a construction management firm, such as Vanner, um, to assist with the jail project. Now, the, the pro for that is that, obviously, um, firms like uh, Vanner and, and others have a lot of experience in those types of things. And the level of service, the level of effort can be dialed up or down, you know, uh, for, for cost, savings, depending on what we're looking for. That's going to be our most expensive option, but it can be the most comprehensive option. The next option would be to hire additional staff in-house. The problem there is right now we have recurring long-term costs. We have the time factor of recruiting, interviewing, hiring. We have the difficulty of finding um, qualified personnel. The next step down would be to retain some sort of um, consultant, some contract staff, just to help us with this project. Not a firm, but individuals, either an administrative level, um, construction experience level, just to be an extension of me and some of our other staff to help with the tasks that we're going to encounter. And then the last option that is the most unfavorable is to hire no one, basically, and then I would devote all of my time to the jail project and not to any other project for the 18-month duration. So it is an option, so we just want to make you aware of it. So there's really four options there with four different cost magnitudes with each one. And obviously we need to do a little bit of work on finalizing what those numbers are and any paperwork that would go with it. So before we do all of those, kind of wanted to see where <coughs> your thoughts were. We need. We need to select one of those, though. Thank you. Supervisor uh, Patello? Yeah, thank you. As a member of the Facilities Committee, we've uh, discussed uh, what Adam just laid out, uh, you know, in a little bit of detail. And Adam laid it out perfect as far as what our, our you know, three options and, and um, you know, some of the disadvantages of, you know, and advantages of each of them. Uh, Supervisor uh, Medina and I, uh, talked about it uh, uh, together as well uh, as the facilities committee, and we would recommend to the you know to the rest of the board that we go with the uh, uh, veneer uh, uh, for construction management in the fact that uh, they've that's what they do is jails and and they have experience in that. Um, we, we have deep concern about you know this project staying within. Uh, our set budget, and we feel that they're best positioned uh, to uh, provide that. I don't know, Supervisor Medina, if you have anything to add. Well, you know, one of the things when Anthony and I were talking, we were talking on various um, ideas. It is to hire no one, it's not an option. We both agree on that. Um, to hire someone that 
doesn't have any experience or like you're saying, well, somewhat experience, bring them in a staff or do that. That's not the uh, answer either because it's short term. So what I was looking at is, and it wasn't so much Van Deer. It was a construction management firm. Someone, whether I don't understand how the bidding process works in this part right now. Do you go out for an RFQ or a request for proposal? And then you look at each one and is it a blind bid? Is it based upon, we had mentioned Van Deer, I believe, has the, uh, you know, they're known to oversee a lot of the prison systems. So what I suggested was to go ahead and go ahead and look at a construction management firm. But I'm not exclusively on Van Deer, just so you know. All right, thank you. Supervisor Mosley. Okay, so I guess my question is, what have we hired? Uh, how you how you say your company? Banner. 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 Okay. It's Banner. What have we hired Banner, Banner. Not to <laughs> to do for us at this point? I, I know I should probably know this, but can you clarify what he has been hired? Or they have been yeah. Hired so to do as for he us? mentioned earlier, he was just we were um, to do basically the pre qualification okay. part of this, which was very important. That's why I'd asked him to go ahead and reiterate what that actually buys us and basically it, it helps us to be um or for the bids to come in where they're not super low or they're not ridiculously high in particular we're worried about they're going really high now now there's some competition and 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 the construction uh folks know that so now they have to be a little more diligent when they actually provide bids and, and a little more accurate so that was that was the reason why we went through that process and there's a few other things as well um, you know, having to th having you know meetings with the weekly meetings and just being more on track and pushing this project forward. I mean, Adam, Adam's done a good job, but you know he's one person and we have him spread so thin. He's doing you know a lot of different things, and you know he, it's just it's tough to you know be on point with everything. So that's the main reason. So that's and we and that was a, a fairly reasonable. Um, you know, um, agreement with them. Very reasonable, to be quite honest with you. Um, so the next part of it, and that's kind of what we're at requesting from your board, is to get direction on, you know, do we go ahead and get, you know, do we get direction from the board to go ahead and, and you know, have negotiations, sole source with Van Air. They've already, they were part of the original bid process, I believe. I think they came and, uh, you know, um, they were with part of it, and then the board decided at that time to go ahead and do without a, a CM. Um, the one caveat is if we go back out to RFP, that schedule that was just brought out from Adam as well as from Jerry may push that way out. So we want to be cognizant of that, make sure your board is aware of that. Um, if we go ahead and if the board gives direction to myself to work with them and, and pr provide a, 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 you know, basically a number for you, we can bring it back to the board and we can discuss that. Uh, and, that would be, and, that's, and there's no problem with that. It's all... Um, you know, it's part of our purchasing policy, part of state contracts, and other things that there's, there's, we we can do that um, with that uh, with them. So that's kind of what I, you know, overall. And if I still have the floor, uh, I guess that's where I would prefer. I mean, we're, we're working with them already. They know, they they know us. They know our our issues here. I would I would support going forward with them, and you know. Definitely, but definitely hire a firm to oversee this project. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Supervisor Rivas. Okay. Uh, I, too, will support um, Supervisor Botello and Supervisor Munster's position. Okay. And just, just a reminder, any of these costs are going to be above and beyond any of the costs you've seen today. We understand. Okay. 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 Let me. Hammy? Oh. Hey, Hammy. oh. Take note. You know, Take we're, <laughs> we're, all green, we're all green on something with no price tag. What, we're no, just giving direction no. to come back, come back with a price with a, tag. With a number. So, but no one else can bid on it, right? That's true. You're right. So basically we're giving them yes, correct. an open yeah. checkbook right now. That's correct. Okay, I just want to make sure. Thank you. And, and, and Mr. Chair, if I may, I mean, you know, I can, I can, you know, as an option, you know, look at a couple of other companies and ask them to give us a number. I mean, then that way we'll have three yeah, that'd bids. Be good. That'd be good. And then I can just share that with you. Yeah, actually that's a good idea. Good thing. Supervisor so Medina. All right. I'm going to open up to the public. Anyone from the public? None? You? No, close. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on. You're say doing such a fine job cheering the meeting. Wait, wait we, yeah. We, we, no, we, we want to hear what you have oh. to say. We want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're not.
not going to continue on last night's discussion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. All right. So you got direction? Uh, I do. And right. Okay, thank you. Now we go to closed session. Uh, Barbara Thompson? Yes. Um, we're going to continue item number 28, which we were already adjourned yeah. to previously. Then item number 30 is a uh, conference with legal counsel existing litigation pursuant to subdivisions A and D1 of section 54956.9. Name of the case BMC Promise Way LLC doing ben business as benchmark communities versus County San Benito at Al Superior Court of California, County of San Benito, case number CU 15-0056. 31 is under the same subdivision, name a case awards Holmes versus County of San Benito at Al County of San Benito Superior Court, case number CU 15-00099. And then number 32 is conference with legal counsel anticipated litigation, significant exposure to litigation pursuant to D2E2. F government Code Section 54956.9, number of cases one, facts and circumstances justifying the closed session is the potential of additional litigation regarding the master tax agreement currently being litigated in the Ward Homes and the BMC Promise Way cases, and the request for a tolling agreement related to the Mirabella project. Thank you. Hey, Ray, you got a minute? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yes. Anybody want to comment? Anybody comment? Oh. Nobody comment. <laughs> Can you get your IT guys? Oh, yeah. <laughs>